2017 Chevrolet Camaro. It might be unfair to refer to the Mercedes AMG C63 S Coupe as a Chevy Camaro, but it is no insult. Vaunted Mercedes Benz was building powerful, front engine, rear drive coupes long before 1967, when Chevrolet slapped a made up name on its XP836 project. Naturally, the cars produced by Mercedes-Benz had not inspired the Camaro, although the 1969 Camaro's wheel arch eyebrows were stolen from the Mercedes 300 SL Gull Wing, but that's not important right now. The Mercedes coupes of the time were wafty, elegant things. The Camaro was, of course, a catch-up project aimed squarely at the Ford Mustang. But a curious thing happened in the late 90s and early 2000s, Mercedes started producing the CLK 430 and CLK 55 AMG, chubby little coupes that hewed closely to the, by then, well-established muscle pony template. The brief goes something like this, overpowered, hooligan handling, de facto two-seaters. By the time Mercedes began building Camaros in earnest, the actual Camaro was already wearing the mullet like an albatross about its neck. This did not deter the German company, which has been building them ever since. And so now we find ourselves juxtaposing the Chevy Camaro SS1 with the twice as pricey Mercedes AMG C63 S Coupe. And the Camaro is the better Camaro of the two. At about $45,000, the track capable, new for 2017 one the version is within reach of most industrious individuals. That gives it a leg, a foot, a boot and some toenail polish up on the $76 grand to start, but $100 thou was tested Mercedes. How many times through the 10 best testing weeks did we hear snippets of conversation that were some variation of 100 G's for a C-Class? People were saying that the donuts we gratefully gobbled each morning of 10 best were laced with a substance that made us all hyper-suggestible to Mr. Alterman's voice as he daily reminded us of the three pillars of judging 10 best. How well does the car fulfill its mission? How fun is it to drive? And does it represent good value for the money? That last one is a bit of a sticking point here. The lavishly optioned Mercedes would have to perform heretofore unparalleled feats including, but not limited to, filling in a driver's bald spot to compensate for its $100,000 price tag. In the Bizarro world that we currently find ourselves living in, the track-capable Camaro SS1 rides more comfortably than the Mercedes-AMG C63S. It cannot do that. What the C63S can do is whip off 3.8 seconds 0 to 60 mph runs, top out at 180 mph, and pull 0.98 grams on the skid pad, all while convincing its driver that he is a master of all he surveys, even if he is still balding. Apart from a few makers of Exotica, no other car maker has been able to engineer such titillating exhaust notes in this new era of turbocharging. The C63S's 503 horsepower twin turbo 4.0 liter V8 is one of the modern car world's best means of torturing rear tires. And, in this case, it's bolted into a car that begs its driver to stomp on the right pedal immediately after the apex of a turn to let that engine holler as it kicks the car's tail out toward the exit. It emboldens its driver. It brings joy. The almost identically sized Camaro nearly matches the Merck's accelerative performance. The SS1 the balls to 60 miles per hour in 4.1 seconds and through the quarter in 12.4 seconds at 116 miles per hour it would be slightly quicker if it were equipped with the company's 8-speed automatic, but the one that is available only with a 6-speed manual. We aren't complaining. The Camaro's big 6.2-liter V8 is down on horsepower to the boosted Mercedes V8. But because the Camaro's 3,747 pound curve weight undercuts the C63s by 355 pounds, the two have near identical power to weight ratios. And bear in mind that these are effectively the same numbers that a standard Camaro SS can achieve for as little as $38,000. What the one the package brings is fatter tires, bigger front brakes, and a stiffer suspension, all of which help return as towning performances on the skid pad. 1.05 grams, and in the 70-0 braking test, 141 feet. Neither the standard SS nor the C63S can touch these numbers. But surely this is not just about numbers. 
the Mercedes has to be the better car because it costs so much more, right? Well, not necessarily. Yes, the C63's interior makes the Camaros look like Chevy contracted the fine folks at Play School to build it. Yes, you can see out of the Mercedes more easily. And no, the Mercedes driver won't be assumed to be a mouth breather, as some people will assume of the Camaro driver. The Mercedes driver will be subjected to entirely different insulting stereotypes. Despite its lower mass, the Camaro's structure feels stouter than the Mercedes. And despite the super low profile tires, it simply rides more comfortably than the Mercedes, which feels unyielding as it jiggles over pavement chop, never letting you forget that you bought the AMG ticket and now you must take the AMG ride. Like its less track-focused brethren, the one that delivers stunningly sharp and accurate turning response and a level of front-end grip that belies its size. And like the other Camaro coupes, its steering is nicely weighted and accurate to a degree that those unfamiliar with the newest Camaro would simply not believe. The one is electronically controlled differential and traction control meet out torque to the rear wheels in perfectly measured doses. The Mercedes does not have the same level of steering and chassis fidelity. It's without reservation that we voted the Camaro back onto the 10 best list for 2017. Or, at least, put the V6 and V8 powered coupes, in their one the versions, on the list. The 2.0-liter turbocharged base Camaro, in its first 10 best trial, was not nearly as well received. The chassis is willing, but its Turbo 4 has uneven power delivery and sounds tragic. It doesn't share in the award. Neither does the convertible Camaro. We tested a V6-powered convertible that proved to be the polar opposite of the 2.0-liter coupe, a willing power rain stymied by a soft and floppy chassis. As for Mercedes, well, it should remember that it took Chevrolet 50 years to start making Camaros that are this good. Also, it can take solace in the fact that a Chevrolet Impala makes a pretty miserable substitute for an S-Class, an S-Class, 